might find yourself going in quick editing mode is to fix red eye. And let's go here and you might remember this trusty photo. And the original photo actually has some red eye in it. And red eye happens a lot of the times when you're using a flash. It bounces off the pupils and the eyes and then the camera records it as a red eye. And to get rid of this quickly and easily, you can actually use red eye removal tool, which looks just like this. And to use it, you either hit the Y on your keyboard or just click the button. And you get your little options panel right here. And you go on in and you just click the pupil area of the eye and it automatically gets rid of that red eye. And as you can see, it does a pretty good job. And if you have red eye that's affecting a pet photo, you can actually use the pet red eye option and that's new in Photoshop Elements 12. So that's something to be aware of. Now, coming out of quick editing mode and going back to expert mode, I brought up this photo here and it can use a little bit of help. And the first thing that we're gonna do with this photo is we're gonna work on the shadow and the highlights. Now a shadow and highlight adjustment is something that you do when you don't wanna change the exposure overall or you don't wanna brighten the entire picture. You can actually go in and target the highlights of the photo and the shadows and just change the values of those to give your photo a little more depth without changing the exposure or your brightness. And you do this by going up to enhance and coming down to adjust lighting. And under adjust lighting, you'll see shadows and highlights and click on that. And when you do this, it's automatically gonna change your picture. And as you can see, you've got your preview checked here, which means any changes that you made to these sliders, it's gonna show you in real time what it's going to do. And I actually kind of like the effect of lightening the shadows. If you come down here, you see that without the shadows lightened, you have this really dark picture. But as you start to pull them up, you actually get a little bit better of a photograph. And so I'm gonna say right about 25% is good there. And right here we have some really bright highlights. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that up to darken some of them and kind of mellow out the highlights in this photo. And then finally, we're gonna pull down the mid-tone contrast on this picture to get a little bit cleaner of an image. And when you find that you have some settings that you like, you can go ahead and come up to your OK button and hit OK to commit the changes. Next, we're gonna talk about adjusting the brightness and the contrast. Now the brightness is the overall lightness of the picture and your contrast, a high contrast image, has a lot of black and white in it versus a lot of gray. And to change your brightness and contrast, you're gonna go back up to enhance on your file menu and then come back down to adjust lighting again. And this time you're gonna select brightness and contrast. And once again, you'll get this little dialog box and you get to just play with the sliders until you find something you like. So I'm gonna pull up the brightness just a bit and then maybe just a tiny bit more contrast. So I think that looks not too bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And that's how we adjusted the brightness and contrast on that image. The next adjustment that we're gonna make is to the hue and saturation. Now, when you're changing the hue and saturation, you're actually playing with the color of the photo. And when you add a hue to your photo, you can do that to get special effects. Like if you want it to look like an old timey photo, you could add an overall kind of brown tint to the photo. You can add a lot more saturation or less saturation to a photo to either make the photo more vivid or make it a little more muted. So let's go ahead and change the hue and saturation on this photo. And once again, we're gonna go up to enhance. And this time, instead of adjust lighting, we're gonna go to adjust color. And we're gonna go to adjust hue and saturation. And if you wanna go straight to this, you can do it by hitting Control U on your computer. And once you have that selected, you're gonna get a dialog box again. And this is a little intimidating looking, but what you're doing is you're getting sliders for your hue, your saturation, and lightness. And lightness is very similar to adjusting the brightness. You're just bringing up more white, or you're going towards black. And what you do here is you just pull up and down around the slider until you find a tint that you like. And once again, in the less is more category, if you stick very close to zero, maybe you go slightly this way, you add a little more of a cool tone to it. If you go this way, you're warming it up a little bit. If you stay close to that zero, you're adding just a subtle change. 
And when you start to go way over here, you're really colorizing the photo. So that's something that you can keep in mind. Now, if you really want to do a colorization, you can actually come down here to this little box and click on that. And that will completely colorize your photo if you're just trying to do a special effect. And then you can see, you can tint it whatever color you want by colorizing the photo. But for right now, let's go ahead and pull that off. And let's just make it slightly warmer. Like I said, staying right in the area, but just adding a very slight color cast to it. And next you have your saturation. If you pull to the left, you're going to be pulling out your saturation and making it muted. If you pull to the right, you're going to be adding color and making the photo more vivid. You see how that works? Here you've got a very vivid photo. That's actually way oversaturated. So you'd never want to go there unless you had a special effect. But if you go right around, say, 9 or 10, there you have a slightly more saturated photo. That looks okay, but I'm not super happy with that. I think actually what would work better with this photo is pulling out the saturation. And if you pull it all the way down, you can see that now you have a black and white photo. And when you're happy with your changes, go ahead and hit OK. And now you created a black and white version of your photo. Now I'm going to go back and do an undo and bring back the color to my photo because the next thing I want to talk about is adjusting the skin tone. And to do so, all you have to do is go back to enhance on your file menu. And then here you have a lot of different options. So you're just going to go to adjust color for skin tone. Click on that. And then you're going to get a dialog box. And in this dialog box, the Photoshop Elements is going to actually guide you through the process. It says first thing you got to do is click on the person's skin. And you'll get this eyedropper. So you're going to say that skin tone. And then it kind of automatically adjusts it for you. So right there you could say, well, that's great and go ahead and hit OK and be fine with it. But you can also play with these until you get an effect that you like. And I would say right in there, starting to look a little more natural. Once again, when you're happy with the way it looks, go ahead and hit OK. And that's how to adjust your skin tone. Now the next thing that you may want to do in your photographs is deal with the color curve. And when you adjust your color curves, you're improving the highlights, midtones, and shadows in each channel of your image. And for channel, we mean like a red channel, a green channel, and a blue channel. Remember our color modes from way back? That's what you're adjusting when you're adjusting color curves. Now in order to adjust your color curves, you're going to go right back to Enhance on your file menu. Click that. Above Color for Skin Tone, you've got Adjust Color Curves. Click on that. And here you go with the Adjust Color Curves dialog box. And in this dialog box, you actually have a before and after. So this shows you the photo as it looks without any touching up. And this shows you what it's going to look like if you commit the changes that you're playing with. And in here, you have different styles that you can select. Now, this photo is what I would call backlit. And backlit means that you have an area of really bright light behind your subject. But since we've already been adjusting the brightness, the contrast, and the color balance and all of that, you really don't notice a distinct effect of backlit photos on it. Usually when you have a backlit photo, this person will be dark, and that's because the camera is adjusting for the lightness behind it. But since we've already adjusted it, it's not that big of a problem. But if you did have a very backlit photo, you could go in and select the style and it would give you a pre-calculated adjustment. And you can see that that actually did some pretty nice stuff to this photo. So the pre-calculated is not too bad. You also have some other kind of default settings that you could select. You could darken your highlights. You could go with the default. You could increase the contrast. You can increase the midtones. So you can play with these defaults to see if any of them look good on your photo before you start doing the more subtle adjustments here in the sliders. So I have it set for backlit because I kind of like that effect. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring down my highlights until I get something I like. And that's not really doing a lot, but we went ahead and brought those highlights down a little bit. And now let's bring down the midtone brightness. And as you can see, that's graying out the photo. So we're going to pull that back up because it's a little too much. But we're going to bring it down a little bit. And then we'll bring down the midtone contrast. 
Let's bring the mint tone contrast back up because it gives a more clean looking photo. And then we're gonna adjust the shadows by making them a little less dark. And now you can look at the before and after and see if you like what you've got. I'm not super happy about that, but it's okay. So you can go ahead and hit okay. And you adjust your photo. So now it's probably a good time to talk about how you save your images. And from any editing mode, quick, guided, or expert, you can save your photos. And you can do it just by going up to the file option on the menu bar, clicking on that, and then coming down here to save. And most people kind of have the shortcut for this memorized. It's just control S and that's how you save a photo. And when you save the photo, you're gonna go ahead and get this dialog box and it's just gonna ask you to give a file name before you save it. And you also have some options about what kind of file you want to save. You can save it as a Photoshop document. You could save it as a bitmap. You could save it as a TIFF, but for our purposes, we're just gonna leave it as a JPEG because that's what it already was. So we're gonna leave it like that. But if you need to change the format, you can do so right here. So we're gonna call this portrait and then we're gonna go over, we're gonna hit save. And that's gonna save our file. And when you're saving a JPEG, it's always gonna ask you what quality you wanna save it as. And I always save it as large a file as I can. And this will tell you how big your file size is. So if you have a specific limit that you have on your file size, you can just move the quality until you get a file size in the area that you need it to be. So go ahead and hit OK. And you've saved your file. And as you can see, it's now saving it as portrait one. And that's the one that you have up there. Now, you also have a couple other options when you're saving. You can go ahead and go to File, Save As. The main thing is when you're saving as, you just want to make sure that you change the name. So instead of Portrait 1, maybe you call it Portrait 2. And then go ahead and save. And finally, in this lesson, we're going to talk about color variations. A lot of the times when you're working in Photoshop Elements 12, you may be making images that you want to publish on the web. And when you're doing that, it's actually pretty helpful to be able to see different color variations and what your colors are going to look like when you post them on the web. And in order to do that preview, all you have to do is go up to File and do a Save As for Web and go ahead and click on that. And this is going to bring up a dialog box. And in this dialog box, you will have the original as it is in Photoshop Elements 12. And then over here, you have this GIF. And that is previewing what your image is going to look like when you bring it into the web. And you can change these settings. Like if you don't want to use a GIF, you could use a PNG. You can also change the size in this dialog box if you want to bring it down and make it smaller. And once you have this looking the way you want it to look, go ahead and hit save and rename it and now you have an image saved for the web.